Oh my god, they're dead! Who could have done such a heinous act? I bet it was that frog down by the swamp. I don't like that frog. He's got them shifty eyes. It was that convict iron jaw, that rapscallion. I bet it was that strange shadowy figure that likes to swing in the park on Thursday nights. I swear to you, it was my stuffed panda. He's, he's possessed. It could have been Ricky's arm. We haven't seen it since it got cut off. I definitely know who the killer is. That that is. Way. Blank is the killer. Hello and welcome to Blank is the Killer, the unoriginal horror movie podcast where I, your gold-stealing host, Josh Baker, cover six new-to-me horror movies with a random, spooky topic seven at the end. This episode includes Green Death, Mountain Murder, and Killer Pants. Follow me off this Mark trail to look for some dumb old history landmark. We can talk about horror movies and totally won't run into anyone that wants us dead out here. Number 1, Leprechaun in the Hood, 2000, directed by Rob Spera. A guy named Mac Daddy finds Leppy frozen with an amulet around his neck and a flute in his hand. Mac steals Leppy's magic flute. The amulet is removed and Leppy is unfrozen, but then it lands back on him, freezing him again. Three up-and-coming rappers, Postmaster P, Stray Bullet, and Butch, rob Mac. Postmaster P shoots him, steals the flute, and the amulet is removed from Leppy. A piece of jewelry Mac was wearing stopped the bullet. Mac and Leppy separately hunt down the rappers. Leppy kills some people, including Stray, and Mac kills Butch. Leppy kills Mac, and Postmaster P becomes famous with Leppy as his producer. Leppy is the killer. Mac isn't on the list because he was getting revenge for the trio's murder attempt. We need to make another Leprechaun movie. Where should we send Leppy? I, I don't know, the hood? What an odd idea for a sequel. Of all the locations for Leppy to search for his treasure and kill, the hood was chosen. Vegas and space had already been crossed off the list, so the only place left was the hood. Lep and the hood come to do no good. That's the hook to the rap that Leppy sings at the end of the movie. Here are some things that are surprising for a movie released in 2000. There's a trans character that's handled pretty well for a movie in the 2000s. Leppy is rhyming again. At no point in the movie does Leppy say the N-word. Black characters say it, which is totally fine. It made it seem like Leppy might go for it, but the actually British leprechaun Warwick Davis does not. There are spots in the movie where you think he might decide to end a limerick with it and are screaming at the screen, No, Leppy, don't do it! But he never does it. Future Josh here. The word ninja is used to the same effect in Hood 2. And Leppy does say ninja in that movie. Thanks for interrupting, you time-traveling bastard. What was I saying? Oh yeah, he never says it. He does smoke weed, though, which is inherently hilarious. There's nothing funnier than a killer leprechaun doing drugs. Leppy raps. He smokes weed. What else does he do? He boringly kills people? A majority of the kills this time around stem from Leppy blowing up people's torsos with his magic. The effects work for the blood explosions is fun, but when it comes to the series, fantastical magic deaths are preferred to a simple stomach blast. This time around, Leppy does have the ability to make an army of zombie fly girls. Some of these zombie fly girls are girls he hypnotizes to do his bidding. There is at least one fly girl that is actually the zombie of a character's dead wife. Some prominent rappers show up in Lep in the Hood. Ice-T played Mac and had a decent amount of screen time. He looks like he had a fun time making the movie. He's introduced decked out in 70s attire with a large afro that he pulls a bunch of weapons out of. Cool afro of holding Ice-T. The other rapper is Coolio who has a random cameo while the rapper trio is performing at the church. Unlike in most movies in the series, Leppy comes out on top. 
Postmaster P and Butch attempt to defeat Leppy by dressing in drag and getting him to smoke a joint that's a mixture of weed and four-leaf clovers, but in this installment, the clovers only hinder Leppy's magic for a brief period of time instead of killing him. At one point, Leppy is trapped in a safe again, but he is able to escape with the help of a zombie fly girl that arrives at the church where Leppy's imprisoned. As soon as the zombie fly girl walks through the door of the church, the priest starts hitting on her. It's weird. How are you going to grow the congregation if you decide to get all creepy the second an attractive woman walks through the door? Even though the amulet from 3 is in this movie, it no longer has the Nordic symbol on it. It's not like 3 is directly connected with the hood though, so the missing symbol isn't a continuity issue or anything. There's a rumor in this movie that Leppy is banging women to death. There is no proof that the heinous rumor is true. Leprechaun in the Hood is a breath of fresh air after Leprechaun 4. It's still not the strongest installment, but the novelty is worth seeing if you're checking out movies in the series. If you don't care about watching any of the Leprechaun movies, Lep in the Hood is not going to change that. Number 2, Wrong Turn, 2021, directed by Mike P. Nelson. A group of yuppies, including Jen and her boyfriend Darius, go hiking in the Appalachian Mountains. Locals warn them to stay on the trail. Darius takes the group off the trail to look for an old Civil War fort. Everyone starts dying. One of the yuppies named Adam kills a member of the Foundation, a group of people living in the hills. The living yuppies are taken to the Foundation court. Allegedly, the Foundation were trying to help Adam. Adam is sentenced to death and the others are to be blinded and thrown in darkness for lying. Jen and Darius talk their way out of being blinded and join the foundation. Jen's dad Scott shows up and is sentenced to be blinded for trespassing. Jen and Scott fight their way out of the hills. Jen's hill husband finds her. Jen kills him and the people he brought to take her back to the mountain. The foundation are the killers. Originally, I thought I was going to put Adam on the killer list. He did kill someone whose motives were unclear. Were the hill people trying to help him after he accidentally ended up in their game trap? Nah, the foundation was definitely trying to kidnap and kill the yuppies from the start. Right off the bat, a tumbling log trap is used on the yuppies. It kills one and injures pretty much all of the others. Jen sees a person at the top of the hill. A short time later, all the yuppies have their cell phones stolen while they're sleeping. During the trial, the foundation leader asks if they hurt or attack the yuppies before Adam killed one of theirs. And Jen's dumbass doesn't even bring up the log attack or theft. The whole log sequence is ridiculous. How a log is able to roll down a heavily forested area without getting caught on a tree is puzzling. Why didn't any of the yuppies get behind trees? Why didn't they just run perpendicular to the log's trajectory? The whole sequence has big Prometheus energy. It actually makes less sense than Prometheus. Sure, sure, it's a panic situation. Critical thinking is difficult under that kind of pressure. It still would have been nice to see at least one character do something smart in the situation. The log kills one person. The gore for the log death is gnarly and well done. The poor victim's head is completely crushed between the log and a tree. If only he got behind the tree. Trend alert. The gore trend in Wrong Turn is head destruction. Besides the log death, two people's heads are bashed in with a big stick, two characters are shot in the face with a revolver, and one character's face is stabbed a ton. The title of the movie should have been Head Destruction, given that it has nothing to do with Wrong Turn. There have been six Wrong Turn movies prior to this 2021 installment. I myself have only seen the first two because it was obvious that the quality was going to take a deep dive. I don't have any attachment to the series. That being said, it's still disingenuous to take the name of a franchise and make a movie that has barely any relation to it. You could argue that like the original Wrong Turns, people that don't belong in the mountains are killed by people that live there. That's where the similarities stop. Not only does the new Wrong Turn have barely anything to do with the original series, it calls out fans of the originals. Scott and Jen are talking about a movie night that's going to happen. Jen brings up that her brothers want to watch another inbred hillbilly cannibal movie. 
Scott and Jen are like, ugh, that stuff sucks. This whole interaction is annoying because it shows the new wrong turn is self-aware enough to realize what people expected and wanted from a wrong turn movie, but basically says that another movie like that would be stupid. Again, I don't really care about the original franchise, but if I was watching Scream 5 where there was no ghost face and there was a tongue-in-cheek line where characters groaned about convoluted whodunit slashers that always had the same costume for the killer, I'd be genuinely miffed by the whole thing. All Wrong Turn needed was two factions, the Foundation and the inbred Cannibal Hillbillies. This is set up, but the movie takes the more boring route where the Foundation is simply evil. Would it have been way more interesting if the log trap and cell phone theft was done by the Cannibals and the Foundation was actually a good group that were trying to help Adam? Definitely. There's so much that could have been done with warring factions. If cannibals were completely off the table, there could have been a twist where one of the Foundation members was secretly killing hikers and had been picking off the uppies. Why take an interesting approach when you can just do Foundation bad? You lied in court? Blinded and thrown in a cave. You trespassed? Blinded and thrown in a cave. There were a lot of people that were blinded and thrown in that cave, which shows the Foundation is simply evil. They even participate in capitalism. Huh? Isn't their whole thing that their society is better? Why does the leader's daughter go into town to sell bracelets? They don't have any use for money. Besides the lack of relation to the original series and the confusing nature of the Foundation, there are some really spooky ideas in Wrong Turn. There's a scene where the yuppies are in a tent, Jen wakes up, lightning shows the silhouette of a figure lurking right outside. The scene is unsettling. The whole idea of being blinded and thrown in a cave is horrifying. And it's actually pretty disturbing when Jen and Scott have to make their way through the dark cave. If the Foundation wasn't inherently evil, Wrong Turn would have been a much more thought-provoking movie. As is, Wrong Turn is still entertaining. For the most part, it kept my attention throughout the almost two-hour runtime. There is a fake-out sequence that may be grown out loud that definitely should have been cut. It lulled a small amount during the mainly Scott segments, but was still fun to watch. Check this out, but don't expect it to be a wrong turn movie. Number 3, Leprechaun, Back to the Hood, 2003, directed by Stephen Aram Louie. A girl named Emily finds Leppy's gold, which brings him back to life. She shares the gold with her ex-boyfriend Rory and her friends Lisa and Jamie. Leppy wants his gold back and starts killing to get it. Lisa is killed. Rory and Jamie are injured. Lisa knocks Leppy off a roof into some drying cement, which dries and traps him. Leppy is the killer. Coming into this sequel, I was filled with dread. The Leprechaun movies have been rough since the original, and even though In the Hood had its fun moments, it wasn't solid overall. How could a sequel to a mediocre movie be anything but mediocre? Surprisingly, Leprechaun Back to the Hood is one of the best movies so far. Like all the other installments, it doesn't directly relate to the previous movie. Hood 2 leans into both the goofiness and spookiness. Leppy looks scarier in this one. Not by a lot, but scarier. He's still a jokester, but he has completely dropped the rhyming. He's also got a lot more spring in his step. Literally, Leppy is pouncing on people for the kill. His leaps make him a lot more threatening. The characters in Hood 2 are some of the most likable the series has ever seen. Paige Kennedy played Jamie, the comedic release stoner character. Well, he'd normally be the comic relief character if there wasn't a joke-cracking leprechaun in the movie. Kennedy is a very funny dude. He was fantastic as Radon Randell in Blue Mountain State and a small beacon of light in The Meg. Rory is played by Laz Alonzo, who's currently playing Mother's Milk in The Boys. He's likable. Tangy Miller and Sherry Jackson played Emily and Lisa, respectively. Everyone does a decent job. Compared to the other movies in the series, the acting is strong. There aren't any big-name rappers this time around like Coolio and Ice-T, but Sticky Fingers plays a character. The kills are much more creative and varied than the first hood. Leppy jams a bong into a guy, rips off a cop's leg, tears out a man's still-beating heart, and tears off a girl's jaw. The girl melted down one of Leppy's gold coins into a tooth. She gets the gold tooth and then it disappears until she's attacked by Leppy. There's a few continuity issues like the 
missing gold tooth but since this is the sixth leprechaun movie they're easy to overlook this time around the clover weakness is back before plunging into wet cement Leppy is almost killed twice when rory shoots him multiple times with hollow point bullets filled with diced up clovers when shot Leppy loses life force, which is represented by small balls of light that start floating out of him. This effect looks pretty neat. The CGI for it isn't perfect, but the idea is creative and fresh. Speaking of CGI, there are two strange instances of CGI blood pools in the movie. Both of them are obviously fake. A priest falls down after defeating Leppy in the intro. It's easy to assume the priest falls down because he's dead, so the addition of the blood pool is completely unnecessary. Leppy is beaten with the pipe, which leads to him lying on the ground with a green blood pool. No one is going to believe the pipe beating killed Leppy after seeing what he survived throughout the movie, so there's no reason to include a green CGI pool of blood. Leppy looks overall better in Hood 2. His gold looks fantastic also. The coins look way more authentic than they do in the other installments. The end of Hood 2 drags a bit, but it never comes close to feeling as drawn out as the other movies in the series. If you're a fan of gnarled leprechaun feet, you're in luck. Hood 2 is the only movie in the series where you get to see Leppy shoeless. I'm assuming this trivia fact is true and will update y'all if his disgusting feet make an appearance in Origins or Returns. Future Josh here, you can technically see Leprechaun feet in Origins, but that Leprechaun isn't Leppy. More on that soon. Leprechaun Back to the Hood is one of the stronger installments in the series. It's hard to say whether it's standalone good or just good in comparison to the other Leprechaun movies. It's probably the latter. But if you're jonesing for a Leppy movie, Hood 2 is a good one to pick. Number 4, Leprechaun Origins, 2014, directed by Zach Lepofsky. A group of college students go to a remote town in Ireland. A local named Hamish baits the students into staying in a house. The students are locked in the house and left for dead as an offering for a leprechaun. The friends escape the house and are picked off one by one by the leprechaun. The leprechaun kills Hamish. The only student to survive is Sophie, who kills the leprechaun and makes it beyond a magical barrier that the leprechaun isn't able to pass right before seeing more leprechauns exist. Hamish, his cohorts, a leprechaun, and Sophie are the killers. The leprechaun tricks Sophie into planting an axe into her friend's face. Maybe you should confirm what it is you're burying an axe into before you swing next time, Sophie. I'm going to cut to the chase. Origins is complete garbage. It has a leprechaun in it, but Leppy is nowhere to be found. The leprechaun in Origins is a little feral monster looking thing. Like one of those creatures in the descent, if it ended up shrinking after being thrown into a dryer for a couple hours. The design for the leprechaun is awful. Why have the Leprechaun movies been successful? They have Warwick Davis being a goofy jokester Leprechaun. That's what people want. They want to see Leppy make goofy rhymes while hanging out at casinos, smoking weed, and killing people. They don't want to see something that looks like a tiny gray melted gorilla that was shaved, boringly chase around a group of college kids. Origins almost did something neat. There are POV shots from the Leprechaun that look like infrared vision that makes gold glow instead of heat. That would have been really fun and a great new Leprechaun ability, but the vision was just infrared that was colorized to be yellow. It's heat that's glowing, not gold. Come on, Origins, you couldn't even do gold vision right. All of the kills are bland, characters are either bitten or clawed to death by the Leprechaun. Sophie axing her friend in the face looks pretty gnarly though. Even though the kills barring the face axe aren't all that exciting, the practical effects work was well done. Sophie does decapitate the main leprechaun while delivering the F you lucky charms one liner. It made me groan out loud this time. The effects work for it is okay, but when the decapitation is shown from a different angle, the wound doesn't match the original. The biggest issue with Origins is how painfully generic it is. You could replace the Leprechaun with any dangerous little creature you want. 
All the beats are easily predicted. If you look up the phrase by the numbers, Leprechaun Origins is the first example. To make things look spookier, the contrast was turned almost all the way down. Everything looks washed out. There's barely any color in this movie. Multiple shots are a blurry mess. Terrible GoPro shots are used for people being pulled around by the Leprechaun. Simply put, Origins is an ugly movie. You have to suspend your disbelief in movies a lot, but there's no way that three out of four college kids are willing to do a seven hour one way hike to see a rock. The only positive thing in this movie is Brandon Fletcher's performance, but his character is the first of the group to die. Leprechaun Origins isn't a leprechaun movie. It's a sleep aid creature feature cash grab. It's the most blatant misuse of a horror franchise I've ever seen, and I just talked about Wrong Turn. It doesn't include any of the aspects that make the Leprechaun series fun. It makes no sense. They had a character that could have been a wisecracking Leprechaun. Dylan Hornswoggle Postel is a professional wrestler. Pro wrestling is all about hamming it up and being a goofy character. Pretend that Leprechaun Origins doesn't exist. Don't ever make the mistake of watching it. Number 5, Leprechaun Returns, 2018, directed by Steven Kostansky. Jennifer Aniston's daughter Lila recently joined a sorority that is transforming the cabin from the original movie into a sorority house. Lila is taken to the house by Ozzy. Lepi ends up with enough energy to resurrect himself. Lepi kills Ozzy and gets his coin out of him. Lepi starts killing the sorority sisters and some guys that are also hanging out at the house. After multiple failed attempts to beat Lepi, Lila and the only other survivor, Katie, escape the house right before it explodes with Lepi still inside. Lepi survives the explosion. Lepi is the killer. Leprechaun Returns is a direct sequel to the original Leprechaun. It even has a flashback that shows Lepi's death in the first movie. The flashback has a clover soar through the air into Lepi's mouth. Something's missing though. There's no gum attached to the clover. The clover alone couldn't have been launched into Lepi's mouth with a slingshot without the gum. There's no gum on the clover is a great metaphor for returns. It's missing the magic that made the series fun. You know who really brought that magic? Warwick Davis. Davis decided not to return to the character since he had a kid and didn't want to make horror movies anymore. That's a bummer, but it shouldn't be too hard to find another actor to take up the top hat. Lyndon Porco played Lepi. Porco did not work in the role. His performance is more evil old witch than wisecracking leprechaun. It's the laugh. Simple as that. Lepi's laugh is very important to the character. It's a nice he 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 Not a grating he <laughs> Porco's attempt at an Irish accent ends up making it sound like he belongs in the movie Fargo. His leppy voice is shrill and hard on the ears. His leppy is also a weird sex pervert this time around. He makes a bunch of creepy remarks to Lila and says raunchier stuff that doesn't fit the character. The biggest issue with Leprechaun Returns is the writing. The jokes are terrible. This movie came out in 2018 and Lepi shows disdain for Crocs and a Prius. At least 90% of the limericks are groan inducing. It doesn't make any sense that the characters are hanging out with each other. This is not a group of friends. One character is supposed to be a film student so the most obvious and out of touch filmmaker references are made. If Steve Kostansky had not only directed the movie but also written it, there's a very high chance it would have been fantastic. Kostansky is a practical effects magician, so all of the kills and returns are amazing. A character is vertically sliced in half. Lepi pops out of Ozzy's stomach. A drone decapitates Film Boy. The Mean Girl character has a sprinkler launched into her face that spurts out blood. And another girl lands face first on a pointy trophy replica garden trowel. All of the practical gore is on point and impressive. Gore isn't everything though. The time in between kills is filled with unfunny jokes and characters despising each other. The color in the movie is much better than Origins, but a majority of returns happens at night in and around the house that has no power. It would have been nice to be able to see the effects work in daylight more often. 
Lepi isn't a bad guy that needs to be shrouded in darkness. He can have fun in the sun, where fun is magically killing people in wacky ways. It's nice to see Lepi's weakness to iron and love for shoes return. He finally gets his shilling out of Ozzy. Sure, the shilling doesn't resemble the one in the original movie at all and is now a cheap looking piece of garbage, but at least it was still inside Ozzy, I guess. The acting isn't stellar, but Porco's poor performance obscures everyone else's. Maybe I would have enjoyed Leprechaun Returns more if I hadn't watched all the others right beforehand, but Warwick Davis truly is the man behind the Leprechaun series' success. Instead of watching Leprechaun Returns, check out a kill compilation instead. Number 6, Slacks, 2020, directed by Elsa Kephart. Libby starts her new job at CCC, an ethical clothing company. A pair of jeans starts killing people. Libby's boss, Craig, tries to cover up the deaths. Turns out CCC uses child labor in India. A kid named Kirat died after her headscarf was caught in a piece of heavy machinery. Kirat's spirit has possessed the jeans. Libby and a co-worker, Shruti, reason with Kirat, but Craig angers her. Craig kills Shruti in an attempt to stop Kirat's story from getting out. Kirat, now multiple pairs of jeans, kills Craig, then positions all the pairs on the store floor to ambush customers that are arriving to buy the new collection. Libby tries to stop the horde of customers from entering the store, but the customers get through and trample her to death. The jeans then massacre the customers. The customers, Kirat, and a workplace accident are the killers. CCC really should have shown their child laborers some videos covering workplace safety. Flowy clothing and heavy machinery should never be mixed. Kirat is a killer since her spirit rips apart whoever. She doesn't go after anyone who has any say whether or not CCC uses child labor. Let's acknowledge the elephant in the room. The movie's title is Slacks, but the killer pants are in fact jeans. Jeans are not slacks. Slacks isn't even that great of a title. It kind of sounds like hacks, like hack apart, or slash, but barely. The movie could have simply been called Blood Jeans, or Pants. The fit that kills. Pants. At first, I thought the killer pants were going to be powered by Nazis, seeing as the logo for the Super Shapers is SS. Okay, that's not much to go off of, but at one point the logo is reflected in a character's eyes and is distorted a bit, making it look like a swastika. This is a horror comedy. Killer Nazi pants doesn't seem like much of a stretch. Every time the jeans kill someone, one of four rectangles on the logo turns red. When completely filled, it looks just like the SS logo. Oh my god! Please, someone tell me I'm not crazy. These are Nazi pants. This must have been intentional. Even if it was originally planned to mean something, it doesn't. The jeans filling its red rectangles after every kill is a super cool concept, but once the four spaces are filled, nothing happens. The jeans don't evolve into overalls or magically turn into Gina Davis. There's no reason for the SS logo at all. Slacks is all about there being no ethical consumption under capitalism. It has nothing to do with Nazis. Let's examine the kills. The first kill is fun. A girl puts on the pants and they squeeze her to death. Nice. Second kill has another girl donning the pants and instantly falling face first into a sharp clothing hook. Probably. The hook face impalement isn't graphically shown. It's off screen. Hmm. Third kill has the jeans biting off a man's hands and arms before slicing his neck with their zipper mouth. This is what we want to see, jeans. Incredible. Welp, that's the best kill. Almost every other kill is off screen besides the jeans breaking the neck of an influencer and eating the flesh off Craig's bones. When it gets to the chaotic jeans rampage part of the movie, where a single pair kills what must be at least 10 people, Zero kills are shown on screen. Normally in a movie about a killer something, the first couple kills are weak and implied, leading up to a spectacular, gore-filled rampage. 
Slax is the opposite. A few neat kills followed by nothing. In the summary, I said Libby is trampled to death by hungry consumers, which is honestly an amazing ending. Thing is, she isn't really trampled. She's daintily knocked over by the customers that rush in. She appears to be completely fine before a pool of blood appears. There's no impact to her fall, and no one even steps on her. Her being ruthlessly trampled would have really driven the movie's point home. Slax is... It's... Meh. It has some fun moments, but it doesn't have a solid vision all the way through. Consider checking it out if you're already a Shudder subscriber with some time on your hands. Number 7. Leprechaun Tier List I'll go top to bottom this time. No Leprechaun movie deserves an S tier rating. Sorry, Leppy fans. The little dude grew on me a lot, but these are not S tier movies. A is comprised of Leprechaun 3 and Leprechaun Back to the Hood. Lep 3 is the best movie in the series. It allows itself to be over the top and goofy, and the Vegas setting is great. Hood 2 is also a ton of fun. It's self-aware and ridiculous. In B tier, we have Leprechaun 2. It has some fun magical kills, and Leppy is having a good time. In C tier, there's Leprechaun in the Hood and the original. Hood 1 is a bit of a mess, but it's novel. The original isn't that great, plain and simple. It's mediocre, but it's leagues better than some of the other installments. Leprechaun 4 in Space and Leprechaun Returns are in D tier. As a whole movie, Lep 4 is awful, but it does have some great ideas like Lep's relationship with a space princess that's just as evil and greedy as he is. Returns should be a fantastic movie. It has some of the best kills in the entire series, but everything besides the kills is weak. And Porco as Leppy doesn't work. Lastly, in Trash Tier, we have Leprechaun Origins. It's lucky to even be included on the tier list. It's one of the worst movies I've ever seen. To put a final nail in the series, I'll list them out best to worst. Leprechaun 3. Leprechaun Back to the Hood. Leprechaun 2. Leprechaun in the Hood. Leprechaun. Leprechaun 4. In Space. Leprechaun Returns. Leprechaun Origins. That's a wrap on Blank is the Killer 94, Green Death, Mountain Murder, and Killer Pants. If you dug what I was putting down, consider leaving a rating or review on iTunes. Next episode will be out on April 18th. Until then, make sure to always avoid hiking in the mountains. It's boring and there's a small chance there will be a society of strange people living there that'll want to solder out your eyes and then toss you into a dark cave. It's not like the darkness of the cave's gonna matter. After all, your eyeballs have been destroyed.